वैक्सीन जो हैं पाइपलाइन पे हमारे देश में और बाहर भी ये इस इन वेरिएंट्स जो यूके में हैं और साउथ अफ्रीका में भी आए हैं इनके अगेंस्ट काम करेंगे We've got 40 to 50 million doses already made. Once we get the regulatory approvals in about in a few days, I would say, um, then it will be down to the government to decide how much they can take. This particular virus strain may have its own run, and we have to be very, very careful, very careful. Hello, everyone. You're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. There is a big COVID alarm in the country as the highly infectious strain that emerged in Britain in early December has now entered India. Six people who returned from Britain have been found infected with the new strain that is 70% more infectious. Three UK returnees tested positive in Bengaluru, two in Hyderabad and one in Chennai who is currently admitted in Pune. All patients are in single room isolation in designated healthcare facilities. Their close contacts have also been put in quarantine while comprehensive contact tracing has been initiated for co-travelers and other contacts. It is the need of the hour to follow COVID protocols as a new threat has entered the country and we need to keep our guard up. In fact, Dr. V.K. Paul of the Niti Aayog has said that a deadlier mutation could emerge in India. One silver lining is that India is successfully flattening the COVID curve and the principal scientific advisor, Professor Raghavan, has said that the vaccines set for rollout can tackle the new strain. India has successfully conducted dry runs for the largest mass immunization program in the world the health ministry is testing the mechanism for mass scale vaccinations across the country, conducting pilot programs in Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab and Assam. Multiple vaccines still await emergency use authorization. Serum Institute of India CEO Adar Punawala has said that 40 to 50 million doses of COVID shield have already been stockpiled for immediate relief immediate release. So what does 2021 look like? Where do the government's plans stand as of today? Are we in for a new round of relocks in the next few weeks? And most importantly, is India prepared to counter this new COVID mutation? Joining me on top of the show is Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Professor Vijay Raghavan. Professor Raghavan, appreciate your time. With six cases with new strain detected in India, how much is this a cause of concern? The new strain is a cause of concern, not because it causes more severe disease, it does not. Not because there are concerns about the vaccine working against it, the vaccine will work fine. But because it spreads, it's a transmission is much more rapid. So there's a danger if we don't take adequate precautions that it will spread amongst a larger number of people. And when it does that, some of those people will have symptoms of disease and some of, those, uh, some of them will have severe symptoms. That's why we must be careful. And therefore, every effort is being made to make sure that we track this strain, both in terms of incoming international passengers to see where it is within our population you gave six examples over there. Is it there elsewhere or not? And to make sure that we continue to follow all measures and do so with greater intensity so that we prevent disease spread in general. So what possibly could have led to this mutation making it more infectious? Because virologists say that viruses mutate under immunological pressure and during transmission between people often becomes weaker but more infectious. Sorry, I missed, I missed the question. So, um, uh, yes. Could you repeat that? Yes, what I'm asking is what and how has this mutant become so infectious? Because virologists have suggested that viruses mutate under immunological pressure and during transmission, they tend to become weaker. 
So viruses will mutate whether they are under pressure or not. But when they are under selective pressure of some kind, the kinds of mutations which survive in the population and grow are those which allow it to function in that pressure context. So we must always be wary and track viral mutations, sequence them to see potentially whether there are any changes in domains of the virus which could cause greater problems. In this case, what has happened is that there are 17 important changes in a region of the virus's genome which codes for the spike protein, which is important for viral entry into our cells. One of those changes allows an increased affinity of the spike protein for the receptor through which it goes into cells. Hmm. Another has been linked to increased infectivity and transmission earlier in animal models. These variants bring these two together and therefore seem to increase transmission uh, in populations in London and surrounding regions where it is, uh, you know, now about 70% uh, of the positive cases account for this. And Professor, experts say that the new strain is of concern since it could affect the rate of spread and R, that is the rep reproduction number of the virus. This in turn could end up burdening the hospitals and overall health infrastructure if not controlled in time. What preparation or precaution have we done to ensure that it doesn't reach a stage where our system stands compromised? Well, there are two kinds of uh, measures which are immediately important, and a third one which is already in place and needs to be amplified. One is to ramp up substantially our surveillance through sequencing, and that has already happened. There's been a national consortium of our major science agencies with our scientists to look at sequencing across areas, both incoming passengers internationally and across areas of high disease burden. The second aspect is what we as citizens need to do. We must, without any compromise, make sure, particularly during the holiday season, in the cold winters in the northern parts of our country, we must ensure that we keep masks, social distancing and hygiene hmm. and practice COVID uh, appropriate behavior. These are two very, very important points. The Prof third aspect is, as a precaution, yes. our health system already is able to deal with uh, difficult cases, but we must be prepared should the strain spread that will increase the volume of the number of cases and thereby be a potential burden. We should be prepared for that. Professor Raghavan, though we have suspended flights from United Kingdom, but many would argue that much before the first uh, the mutant was detected, uh, it had spread and perhaps it went unnoticed. Is there a possibility of that? And also, now that this variant has been detected in many other countries, including Australia, Italy, Sweden, France, Spain, Canada, what are other measures that Indian government is contemplating? Well, for the first part, while it is theoretically possible that the spread of this variant would have started earlier. If you look at the frequency of what this has been detected in multiple countries, particularly in Europe, it has not yet been, is not yet significant in those populations, indicating that it has entered there as an in India relatively recently. And therefore very strong measures to both monitor people coming in, as well as its potential spread in our population is something very important and feasible. So that's why we must amplify our sequencing and our monitoring capabilities substantially. Again, remember, I would like to stress, this is a matter of concern because of the speed of transmission. It is not a matter for alarm because the vaccines will still protect against the strain. And it's not clear at all. It doesn't look like disease severity is any worse because of this, just that there are more people who will be infected and therefore more people with disease severity. So is the government now looking at perhaps, uh, you know, stopping flights to other countries as well as it has done with United Kingdom? Sorry, uh, uh, I missed that uh, question. Sorry, you broke up. Yes. So I'm asking you, sir, that is the government looking at stopping flights 
or te temporary suspension of flights also with other countries besides UK? Well, that's something which the uh, Home Ministry, the External Affairs Ministry, and the Health Ministry will take a call on as uh, you know, we, we look at sequence prevalence in multiple countries and flights from multiple countries. Uh, so, um, yes. you know, we have to just wait and see as more information comes in. You know, I would spend a little more time on this mutant, sir. COVID-19 has been compared to many other viruses and pandemics. Is this mutation or variation very different? And does it correlate to some other virus from history in its behavior? No, no, not these particular mutations. These particular mutations, it's clear from the sequence of um, the, the, uh, the genomes that they have arisen independently over time in two or three locations, uh, one in South Africa, one in UK. And they may have come, you know, with bits and pieces of changes from other locations. It is the accumulation of these important 17 changes in the UK variant, which has resulted in this. And that's the way, that's the way mutations occur. You have a little change here, a little change there, and then, you know, one change which can cause a slight problem and another change which adds on to it, and together they cause a more serious uh, issue about transmission. That's the way it happens. So these are all expected in uh, viral spread, and we must be very careful, anticipate them, check them, make sure that they have no problem in severity of disease, inhibit their transmission, and make sure they have no problems with vaccines. And this is the question that is perhaps on everybody's mind. Uh, you know, vaccines are already being ad administered in England, United States, and Canada, and other countries are also getting them. India will also soon start getting them. Uh, can the vaccines effectively counter this mutation or future mutations? The vaccine will, by, by all estimates, it's likely to be working against this variant as well as uh, the ones already prevalent. And the test of that is what you're going to see in the UK and elsewhere where the strain is widely prevalent in, in the UK, particularly in the London region. So that's, that'll be, your, your question will be answered very soon. Hmm. About whether in future vaccine recalcitrant mutations can arise, certainly they can in theory. In practice, we haven't seen them yet. We have to be guarded. And should they arise, we will be able to see them as they arise and be able to develop new vaccines, new variants of the vaccines themselves to counter it. So this, at the worst case, could be a long ongoing battle. And at the best case, we will not need new vaccines and the ones we have will um, work quite fine. And so far with the SARS coronavirus 2, it's tending to a situation where the vaccines will be um, uh, useful uh, um, or going over time. But we don't know that yet. We have to see uh, after we vaccinate this year, uh, the coming year to uh, 2021, what happens the year after that. Uh, Professor, um, you know- But we are much, much better prepared against this virus hmm. than we were, for example, when the pandemic started. And just like with influenza, we'll be able to roll out new vaccines every year, should that be needed. Right now, that doesn't seem to be the case, but we have to see. So are we witnessing a kind of hybrid COVID-19 virus? And what about the current testing protocols? Um, or are you looking at some kind of rejigging of the proto testing protocol to ensure that this virus is detected effectively? So there are two issues here. One is about the way you want to detect this variant. But remember, our goal is not to detect only this variant and assume that nothing else will happen. Our goal is twofold, to, to test and identify those who are positive, and amongst those, take a representative sample and sequence their genomes to know whether this variant is there and if other variants are also arising. So given that need for doing this comprehensively, that would be the approach. It so happens that this variant can also be detected in certain kinds of RT-PCR tests. But remember that that would bias our search to looking only for this variant as if this is the only thing which we need to search. We need to search for this and also for other variants which will arise. And that's what the National Consortium is looking at. 
and is the center uh, you know guiding the states um, because of this new strain how they should go about it well the health ministry works with the state uh, governments and their health ministry and going down right to every level uh, at the finest level of granularity and they also have already in place an identification testing tracking and isolation program and what we're gearing up now is amongst those who test positive those who come from abroad those who are uh, already there in areas where the spread is intense those in hospital context representative samples from these will be analyzed and sequenced so that we identify as i said not just this variant but other variants which may be prevalent or may arise in our population Professor Raghavan, when shall we see a proper and mass rollout of the vaccine and also can the vaccines effectively counter this? As I said, there does not seem to be any reason to think that the vaccines currently uh, being rolled out will have any problems against this variant uh, or against uh, the uh, pre previous versions which are there. That's because the vaccines are against the entire spike protein and they raise, allow, make the body raise antibodies against different parts of the protein. This variant affects only very few parts of the spike protein. Important part, very few parts. And therefore, the vaccine, there's no reason to think that the vaccine will be any less effective against this. Last question to you, sir. Despite this gloom, this has also been a year of hope with the development, testing, and approval of vaccines at remarkable speed. For the first time ever, a pandemic of human disease would be controlled by vaccines in real time. Is that how you will usher in 2021? Well, number one, uh, I don't think this is uh, gloom at all. This shows the you know extraordinary way by which science works. And remember, what happened in the UK was that there was an increased transmission. But UK scientists identified this variant. And this is not a reason for gloom. This is a reason for very great positive attitude towards science that the UK identified this, made this publicly available, quantified the nature of the spread so the rest of the world can take care. So this is exactly how things will happen. Whenever there's a problem, that will be shared, information will be shared, solutions will be shared nationally and globally, and we can take care of this virus. The vaccines are an example of that. Vaccines normally take tens of years to make, and they cost hundreds of millions of dollars. The world has invested billions of dollars in doing this in one year. Now, going forward, we can be very positive that we should, therefore, put in place new ways by which we make this ability to get vaccines rapidly uh, a routine. That's a very, very big challenge, but we've shown that it's feasible in an expensive way in one year, now we have to show that it's feasible no matter what in an affordable way, and that can be done. All right, uh, Professor Raghavan, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time here on News Epicenter, sir. And joining me now is K. Srinath Reddy. He is the President of Public Health Foundation of India. Professor Reddy, appreciate your time with India detecting six cases of new mutant COVID virus strain. Uh, all of them returning from UK, how serious is this threat? And do you think we have the right assessment? Well, considering the fact that this particular strain was initially noted in UK in September, and it was only publicized after the cases started going up in December there, it is likely that the virus could have entered even earlier into India because our travel restrictions have been imposed only a few days ago. Therefore, it would not be a surprise if more cases have actually occurred in India with this particular variant. Hmm. However, hmm. as has been stated in the UK, this particular virus has exhibited greater infectivity, but not greater virulence. In fact, usually it is a sort of rule of thumb for viruses that they they, the trade-off between virulence and infectivity. It is not always applicable to a new virus, but over a period of time, if viruses increase their infectivity, they tend to downplay their virulence. So we do not even know whether this is less virulent or not, but certainly so far, the UK says it is not more virulent. 
So okay. the fact that it's likely to infect more people, but not necessarily with any greater level of severity. Professor Reddy, because we are looking at a new strain here, and you have said that the new variant may be more infectious to younger individuals. Why are you saying that the young people who tend to have certainly a better immunity are more vulnerable? Well, this is what the UK people have said. We still do not have an experience of it. What they have said is that because this particular variant is more capable of opening up the cells to enter through the ACE2 receptor, and because it has produced about 17 different variations in the spike protein, which is the key which it uses in order to actually enter the cells, it is felt that there may be a greater ease of entry into the cells even for younger people. So that is what the UK has reported. We still have to garner our own experience in this. So we are going by what the UK has said. Hmm. And Professor Nadi, do you get the sense that because the strain, it's a new one and very little is known about it, uh, the scientists are still trying to fathom as to what will be the extent of um, infection or virility. Uh, could you give me a sense of how it will behave in India? Because any mutant reacts differently in different countries. Well, viruses do continue to mutate in, in different countries at different rates, and usually one to two mutations, mostly minor, are noted in these viruses, and including the COVID-19 virus. In this particular case, in UK, they felt that this virus had an opportunity to mutate with so many different variations because it had long enough time to stay in an immunodeficient person, and because that person could not expel the virus or overcome the virus quickly, it had enough leisure time to actually develop more mutations. Hmm. Now, we do not know what's going to happen in India. It's likely that there could be variations coming up in India too, but how severe are they going to be? We do not know. But right now, there is no need for apprehension because, firstly, we do not know how much this variant has spread. And if we take our precautions to prevent further spread, not only by limiting people coming from outside or screening them, but much more importantly, continuing our public health precautions of masks and physical distancing and hand hygiene, and particularly avoiding um, super spreader overcrowded events, then that is our best defense, rather than get worried about this new variant. Because we have to, any, any variant, we have to observe the same public health precautions. So what should be the government's response in this step? You know, what, how can they contain the spread of the virus? And uh, would you say then that because we are in unlock 5.0, the only way forward could be another round of lockdown? I don't think there is a need for a lockdown because firstly, we do not know how rapidly it is spreading in India and how many people have initially brought the infection into India. And if we continue to take the kind of public health precautions with even greater degree of discipline, I think we'll be able to actually safeguard ourselves from the strain. But because it is more infectious and more people may get infected, including some of the people who are vulnerable like the elderly and people with comorbidities, we need to be especially careful about them and protect them from exposure. And if the vaccines come, they should be among the first people to be vaccinated because against any strain, they are the people who are likely to get into trouble. Uh, and therefore, uh, with the old strain or the new strain, that protection of the vulnerable has to remain a prime objective. Do you believe that this new strain has the potential to perhaps undo what we have achieved in the fight against coronavirus? You know, we have reported just 16,432 new cases in the last 24 hours, and the lowest increase it is, in fact, in daily cases in the last six months. Well, as far as infectivity is concerned, I think we have taken due note and we need to continue to take precautions both by preventing entry of more such infected persons into the country and isolating them as quickly as possible and preventing the spread within the country. If we continue to take our public health precautions as well as appropriate administrative decisions, there is no reason to believe that this will completely undermine the success that we have achieved so far. 
But all it tells you is that do not take anything for granted. Continue to maintain the vigil and do not declare victory yet, though there is considerable degree of reason for a feeling optimistic at the moment. All right, uh, Professor Reddy, thank you so much for joining us on News Epicenter. So some hope there being shared by him. That is, of course, our top story, and we will continue to track it very, very closely on CNN News 18. That's all from me. Thanks so much for watching.